Hey everyone, hope you're having a good day. My name's Andy, my channel's Finding Value. Today we're gonna go over a bunch of different ratios. I'll show you how an asset is performing against another asset, if we've got any sort of good setups that are going on, and uh, we can see where the value is in the market and what asset could potentially outperform other assets. So let's dive in, let's see what we've got, and I'll give you my financial opinion. If you guys need any help in this commodity bull market that's coming up, definitely consider signing up, join our community, finding-value.com. Uh, it's the platinum membership. You can use the word discount in the coupon code. And it doesn't matter how much experience you have, you can have nothing. Uh, just join up, uh, ask whatever questions you've got, and I can answer uh, whatever I can. All right, guys, let's dive in here. So uh, what I've got up is URNM versus XLE. So we're gonna look at a bunch of ETFs versus other ETFs to see where the opportunities are in the market. And this is something that I do uh, to see which sectors might be interesting to look at. Now, there's something kind of interesting with URNM. URNM is uranium, XLE is the oil and gas exploration companies of larger size. And when I look at this, uh, let's, go to the, let's go to the weeklies. So this is weeklies. Uh, URNM is looking very, very good. So when we look at this, what I look at is basically this is a double top. We usually get a pretty strong sell-off from that double top down. We have another kind of inverted flag pattern. We come on down and you can see the size of these pullbacks are getting less and less. And now we're coming into a, even a lesser and then even a lesser here. And this to me looks like it's ready to turn around and URNM could outperform. Uh, we're also seeing what I consider to be the green army. The green army is the big green candlesticks that show up towards the end. And this to me looks like it's trying to turn. We're at a support level to some degree here. And uh, it looks very good. Now, another thing that it also looks like is if I were to throw, let me grab this. I throw it on top here and basically in my opinion, this is an accumulation cylinder there. And I know we've had a larger pullback and it, the, the cylinder was gonna be a massive one. And when I, when I look at this, and I know it's on the URNM chart, that's why I'm looking in, this is over extended to the downside because of XLE's performance and how it outperformed during this time frame here. But what I, what I do see, and it's inherent to URNM's chart, is you know this is one two three four five and then you're going to go all the way to top six and then seven and I, people are going to be like well you know is that the cylinder or not it is if you were to overlay what a cylinder and the last pullback looks like natural gas is also doing it as well uh so urnm natural gas and there's also a bunch of different companies in oil and gas that are putting in this Livermore cylinder. I'm seeing it all over the place. Uh, it, what it is, it's a cylinder that people are accumulating. People were accumulating in this. And yeah, we've got some people who accumulated up here and sold off. Uh, but I do think that this looks like it's ripe to move on higher where URNM could outperform XLE. URNM versus uh, natural gas. You can see that we had a massive pullback in natural gas and the valuations really came back. So it would have been good to go long URNM down at the bottom here, and we had an outperformance against natural gas, and it's probably going to continue for a, a little while. Uh, but when we get up to this level up here, or maybe even in this level down here, uh, anything above 10, which we're getting somewhat close to, natural gas might be one to start looking at because it's already kind of blown out to the downside. URNM versus XOP. Now this is a little bit more uh, progressed versus say XLE. This looks like we are ready to go higher for URNM. We could see an outperformance uh, for URNM. You can kind of throw a downtrend line. You can see that's clearly broken there. Uh, so URNM is actually looking fantastic uh, given last week's performance. Looking at URNM versus platinum. Uh, platinum has been on a tear. Uh, you got to keep in mind, though, that platinum is the physical commodity. URNM is a leveraged way to play it through the mining companies. So 
Uh, this here is right at support. There it is. We've had a topping kind of support there, a little topping action. And we're just been moving sideways, but I would not discount URNM. URNM looks fantastic. Uh, I think Platinum also looks fantastic. And I think they're going to race side by side with URNM uh, outpacing it. URNM versus NDQ. This looks still fantastic for URNM outperformance. Uh, we're seeing the large buying pressure days through here. Now, keep in mind, this is a ratio. I understand. We are kind of contracting up, and I think we're probably going to break to the upside here. So that looks good for URNM. Uh, URNM versus commodities. URNM looks absolutely fantastic. Uh, here's your one, two, three. This is just a accumulation cylinder. Six, and then seven kind of blew out to the downside and had a little bit more of an extended period. You usually get these like these humps at the before a big move. And if you notice, we've got a big move that is potentially in progress. It just started right here. So we kind of came down and squeezed up in this falling wedge and we've broken to the upside. So URNM looks good to outperform the CRB index. So URNM is looking very good so far. Uh, here's URNM versus energy service companies. Uh, these are, I would say, both very good opportunities. And uh, we came to a very high level. This is where OIH is outperformed through here. And we might have a little bit left, left on the right-hand side where OIH may uh, perform very well with URNM. Uh, think of it as kind of a next little hump, and then we might go higher with URNM. Uh, when URNM gets going, I don't think anything can really beat it. Uh, it is highly leveraged. It moves very fast. And we could see a, a vast outperformance of uh, uranium mining companies. So here's URNM versus REMX. Uh, right now, REMX is cheap. So that might be one to look at. Uh, but URNM does look good against all the other ones. And then URNM versus COPX. Uh, this looks very good for URNM to potentially head higher. We are at a support level. And it looks like we're getting support. It's starting to turn around. We have, a, I call that a bloody nose. And I think URNM is going to outperform COPX. Now let's look at some of the other um, ones. XOP versus REMX. Uh, kind of looking out this way. Uh, upper Up here, REMX is cheap. Down here, XOP is cheap. Uh, so we're kind of in the middle. Uh, it's probably going to be a battleground between the two. Uh, between that, so and XOP is the exploration production companies. Um, REMX is rare earth metals. Mu is agribusiness ETF. This looks really good for XOP. Uh, we've broken to the upside. Uh, we're still moving on higher. This still looks like it wants to continue to go higher. Could we have a little bit of a of a we'll call it consolidation period here? Yeah, we could. But uh, it looks favorable for XOP. Uh, XOP versus. XOP versus OIH, this is a clear winner for OIH. OIH looks incredibly cheap, and it is outperforming uh, XOP. So OIH is the one that I would be looking at. That is the energy service companies. Uh, XOP versus GDX. GDX looks very good. We've got a bearish engulfing pattern there. Uh, looks like it started to make its way a little bit there, so it kind of lost some steam. You can see the contraction in the up movement here as it rolled over and put a nice good wick at the top. And now we're seeing GDX outperform. So GDX is looking very good versus the XOP uh, ETF. GDX is your gold and silver mining companies. XOP again is your exploration production companies. Uh, XOP versus crude oil. XOP is outperforming crude oil and I expect that to continue. Uh, crude oil has been in a little bit of a pullback uh, I think there's a little bit more left. And then once crude oil starts to turn around, I think XOP uh, is going to outperform. XOP versus COPX. So copper has been outperforming. We're getting a nice little pullback here. Uh, we are still cheap for XOP. If you take back and look at the 2010 era, I mean, we're basically back there. And I, I think that XOP it would be the play versus copper. It would be XOP. Now, if we we're up here, copper's the play. Definitely. But uh, down here, I would still say XOP, yeah, you know me, <laughs> is beating the copper ETF.
So let's look at energy service funds. We got a couple here. So that's OIH versus Mu. Definitely OIH is the winner here. It still looks pretty good for that continued outperformance for OIH. So energy service company is looking good. Uh, OIH versus REMX. Definitely OIH. It is cheap and it looks fantastic uh, as it comes up. Come on up as it comes on up. Uh, vast outperformance, big up day, small down day. Uh, that is a continuation pattern higher. We call that the bloody nose. It's a big guy with a little bloody nose. So that's the energy service companies versus rare earth metals. Looking at GDX, GDX versus uh, gold itself. GDX is incredibly cheap. Uh, if we throw some patterns on here, you can kind of see there's a little bit of a resistance line coming through here. And we haven't broken out of anything yet, but we can see that the, the lows are kind of holding here. If we get a little bit of momentum break out of this, we can have a big move in GDX. So GDX has a long runway ahead of it. That is one area that I would be looking at right now. Uh, GDX versus REMX. GDX is the pick. That is where I would be looking. It looks incredibly cheap in relationship to rare earth metals. And we have a long runway ahead of it for valuation to appreciate. Uh, GDX versus SILJ. Uh, this is gold and silver miners versus the junior silver miners. Junior silver miners looks incredibly cheap. Uh, what is this saying? It means that SILJ is cheap, very cheap against something that is already incredibly cheap. So uh, the silver junior, junior mining companies are, are some probably some of the cheapest out there from a valuation uh, ratio perspective. Now, it doesn't mean this has to go down. It just means that it's cheap and we should be looking for an opportunity where SILJ could, could be bottoming and turning and outperforming because of how cheap it is in relationship to all these other assets. Uh, copper versus OIH. Uh, OIH still looks cheap, so I would think that this is gonna head lower with time. It doesn't mean it can't come back up like that and then go back down. Uh, but it's still on the cheap end for energy service companies versus copper. And then the copper ETF versus GDX. GDX is where I would be looking uh, for a, hopefully an outperformance, but that is where it's cheap. And remember, SILJ is cheap to GDX. So if we were to do a COPX versus SILJ, it's at a extreme level of how cheap it is. Uh, it's so cheap that you know it's off the scale since 2015. This is where uh, SILJ is more expensive. Little double bottom there. We've got, uh, I'm gonna skip skip TAN. Now let's go to some of the metals here. Uh, let me scroll on up for some other ratios that I usually track and follow. Uh, platinum versus gold. This is a kind of a well-known ratio. I, I track this one quite a bit. Uh, super cheap for platinum. Very cheap, we've broken out. So break to the upside of this pattern. I think we're going to see an outperformance of platinum over time uh, versus gold. Platinum versus palladium. We can see an outperformance starting to happen. We're at 0 0.6. 0 0.6 is the same level as it was in 2001 at the bottom of that market where platinum took off against palladium. With the valuation where it's at, platinum is incredibly cheap versus palladium. I think I'm gonna I think we're going to see a platinum outperformance versus palladium, and we could have a vast outperformance. And that outperformance historically. Platinum's gotten up to levels of five and a half versus palladium. That means one ounce of platinum can buy five and a half ounces of palladium. Right now, we're at 0.6. It means that one ounce of platinum can only buy 0.6 ounces of palladium. There is a huge revaluation that could occur uh, uh, between these two metals. Platinum versus silver, we've had a breakout of platinum versus silver. Uh, we could see an outperformance of platinum versus silver. Hopefully that's the case. Uh, that is how I am positioned. And silver, when it gets going, it gets going. So if it does outperform, plat uh, platinum outperforms silver, and it's during a bull market, that means platinum could go berserk. Uh, I don't know if that'll be the case. Uh, but right now, platinum is incredibly cheap versus silver. The gold to silver ratio it is favorable for silver. Uh, silver is on the cheap end, 
Uh, anything kind of above, above this halfway point, silver is cheap above it, which we are. And it is moving downward. We had a squeeze up and then we're moving back downward again. So silver is preferable uh, to gold. And what's crazy is if platinum outperforms silver and silver outperforms gold, we could see a vast revaluation of platinum. Uh, palladium versus silver. So this guy's been in a consolidation zone. It's just been moving back and forth. And, you know, palladium still has some deficits out there. And silver, you know, that also, I'll say, is, is doing quite well. So we've had a pretty vol big move lower. This does look like a bloody inverted bloody nose, and hopefully we can still compress because I've been favoring silver in my accumulation. Dow Jones to gold ratio. It's kind of a, a big old chart here. It's favorable for gold. Dow Jones industrial average is, let's take a big, big picture view here. This does look good where we could potentially head higher for Dow Jones. But um, obviously, you want to be invested in gold when this falls lower. So gold, gold, gold. We've got a nice kind of move higher here in a disinflationary period of the real estate cycle. Uh, that is what's causing it. Kind of broken downtrend. I didn't draw that very smooth. But broken downtrend, we're kind of ch chasing sideways. I do think that this will eventually work its way lower um, with this ratio given the market conditions. Now, gold versus oil, the oil to, uh, gold to oil ratio. Now, we had a, a breakdown here. Let me get this off here. So we broke down below this line. We squeezed on up. We broke back down. And I would have said that this would have gone lower given the squeeze up. But we are heading higher at this time where gold is outperforming uh, crude oil. Uh, I do think that we could have a period where gold outperforms all this stuff in a little bit of a slowdown. We'll call it a recession, slowdown in the markets. And then I think this is all going to reverse back down. Uh, the market conditions for oil is we're running deficits in oil. And oil is the number one commodity. If they go and try to ease in the market, I do think that the housing market will kick back on. Uh, if we get lower interest rates, which that's basically easing, and then it'll kickstart all these inflation guys back on. But right now we're kind of in a slow period. Uh, so we are seeing a relaxation in this, in this ratio. And we have broken to the upside here uh, for gold to outperform oil. And we can see that in all the you know GDX versus uh, XOP and XLE charts. We can see that outperformance potentially in gold so we could see a period of time where gold outperforms oil and gdx outperforms the uh the oil stocks and stuff here's the uh, copper to gold ratio it's been basically chopping sideways here you can let me throw on a got kind of a pattern there flag pattern where this could break to the downside gold could outperform uh, copper hg1 is copper big picture view uh that's what it looks like that does look like gold could outperform we could see a little bit of a slowdown in the market a little bit of a scare and that's what could basically cause that outperformance but i do think sometime during this bull market that we're going to break this downtrend downtrend line and copper is going to outperform but it needs the right conditions it needs the econo economy to be strong and perhaps a little bit of we'll say people not that interested in gold because of recession or slowdown but uh that's what i've got for today guys um a bunch of different charts that we went over uh you know if i were to sum it up i think there's opportunities in gold and silver mining companies after looking at this data uh, i think uranium looks very interesting it looks like it's going to outperform uh, other energies uh, it's going to outperform a lot of other asset classes and then also energy service companies look pretty cheap and it looks like they're positively making gains against other sectors so if i were to look at a couple of different sectors those would be the sectors i'd be looking at because uh they look the best all right guys um again if you need any help definitely sign up to the website uh join our community it doesn't matter how much experience you, you have uh you can learn whatever you you want you can ask me questions directly 
uh, at the Platinum question and answer sessions. Uh, I have put a lot of trainings on the website as well if you want to learn how to do technical analysis. Uh, we do a lot of, we'll call it uh, fractal analysis, which is looking at patterns that repeat over time, uh, measuring those patterns, and those patterns can give projections of where potential uh, movements can go. Uh, right now, I think it looks favorable for a commodity bull market, uh, but we are seeing a slowdown in the overall market. It has an impact on all of the companies and sectors, and it could be a pretty volatile year, moving up and down all around. Uh, but what we're seeing is we're seeing some of these asset classes outperform against each other. Uh, given certain market conditions, that's what's causing these outperformances in the relative strength and weakness against these assets. So the market conditions are turning these assets against each other. In inflationary period, uh, XOP does very well. When that inflation slows down and we go more towards a disinflationary period, uh, usually gold starts to outperform. Uh, think of it as the economy kind of expanding money in the system. Uh, the highly inflationary assets do very well. They outperform. And eventually, when those market conditions change, you'll see outperformance of other different assets. Uh, you can literally take what I just went through, look at all these different assets and which ones are outperforming the other uh, is an indication of the market condition. So uh, typically, what you'll see is the agribusiness ETF. That one does very well with the overall markets. And some of these other guys, they're very inflation sensitive and other ones aren't as inflation sensitive and do very well towards a later end of a cycle. So uh, that's what I've got for today. Give me a thumbs up for the content. Subscribe to the channel. Uh, if you haven't, just click subscribe. And we'll catch you guys later. This is Finding Value.